welcome everyone in the last lecture we discussed the simplification of the speed time curve of the main line services in the main line services we have the free running period that is why the curve the speed time curve of the main line services was very much similar to a trapezoidal and we approximated that particular curve to its close uh, uh, trapezoidal form we found out the area of the under the curve by uh, calculating the area of two triangles and a rectangle in it but in urban and suburban services as the free running period is absent so the curve looks something like this and it cannot be approximated to its trapezoidal form so another method of simplification is to be used this curve has the non linearity in the acceleration period while the costing and breaking periods are linear so its linear approximation could look something like this where we approximated this curve with a straight line now the area under the this curve could be calculated by calculating the area of this triangle plus the area of this triangle plus the area of this third triangle and the area under this rectangle let us see how we can simplify this curve using the quadrilateral approximation in this the free running period is absent and the acceleration is alpha kilometer per hour per second so the acceleration in in during this period is alpha hence alpha can also be written as alpha is equal to v1 speed divided by time the time is t1 speed is v1 so alpha will be equal to v1 divided by t1 similarly deceleration during the costing period is beta c in kilometer per hour per second so beta c can also be written as v1 minus v2 divided by t2 because the speed during during the costing period is v1 minus v2 and the time taken during the costing period is t2 so beta c will be speed divided by time which is v1 minus v2 divided by t2 and beta is the deceleration during the braking in kilometer per hour per second so beta will be equal to beta will be equal to v2 divided by t3 thing to be noted here is as alpha is in kilometer per hour per second so that means if the velocity is mentioned in kilometer per hour then the t1 should should be mentioned in seconds similarly t2 will be in seconds and t3 will be in seconds here t1 is calculated as v1 divided by alpha similarly t2 is calculated as v1 minus v2 divided by beta c and t3 will be calculated as v2 divided by beta and where t1 t2 and t3 all will be mentioned in seconds also t is the total time taken by the locomotive to travel from point a to reach to the point t then t can also be written as t1 plus t2 plus t3 now the area under the curve area under the curve which is equal to the distance traveled area under the curve is equal to s s will be equal to s1 the area of the triangle 1 plus s2 area of the triangle 2 plus s3 area of the triangle 3 plus s4 where s4 is the area under the rectangle this 4 so s can be written as S1 will be the area of the triangle 1 which will be equal to half times the perpendicular perpendicular here is v1 and the time time here is t1 so it is half times v1 into t1 but the thing thing to be noted here is t1 is in seconds whereas v1 is in kilometer per hour so we need to write this v1 into seconds so we be, we will be dividing it with 3600 to convert it into kilometer per second similarly the area under the curve uh, under the triangle s2 will be half times the vertical axis vertical axis will be v1 minus v2 times the time time is t2 here 
अगेन दिस इज इन सेकेंड्स दिस इज इन किलोमीटर पर आवर तो दिस नीड्स टू बी कन्वर्टेड इन टू किलोमीटर पर सेकेंड सो वी विल डिवाइड इट विथ थर्टी सिक्स हंड्रेड प्लस एस थ्री वेर एस थ्री विल बी द एरिया अंडर दंडर दिस ट्राइंगल सो इट्स डिस्टेंस इज इट्स परपेंडिकुलर इज वी टू एंड द टाइम इज टी थ्री सो इट्स एरिया विल बी हाफ टाइम्स वी टू टाइम्स टी थ्री प्लस Area under the rectangle S4, this. So the area under the rectangle will be length into breadth. Its length is V2 and breadth is T2. So it will be V2 into T2. Again, T2 is mentioned in seconds. V2 is in kilometer per hour. So we will divide it with 3600 like this. Similarly, over here, T3 is in seconds. V2 is in kilometer per hour. So we will divide it with 3600 once again. So the total distance is given by this equation. Further solving it, we get one by seventy-two hundred times v one t one plus one by seventy-two hundred again v one t one v one t two from here minus one by seventy-two hundred v two t two. Plus one by seventy two hundred v two t three plus v two t two divided by thirty six hundred. Further solving it, we get one by seventy two hundred into v one t one plus one by seventy two hundred into v one t two. And solving this and this, we get. Plus one by seventy two hundred v two t two plus one by this one one by seventy two hundred v two t three. Now we can certainly take out v one common out of these two terms and v two out of these two terms. Further solving, we get s equal to v one by seventy two hundred. V1 divided by 7200, taking common out, we get T1 plus T2. Similarly, out of the other two terms, we can take out V2 divided by 7200, and we will be left with T2 plus T3. T2 plus T3. As we know, T is equal to T1 plus T2 plus T3. T3. So we can substitute the values of T1 plus T2 from this equation, and we will get S is equal to V1 divided by 7200 times T minus T3. Similarly, V2 divided by 7200 into T2 plus T3 will be equal to T minus T1. We can further solve it by taking out. T common out of these two, we 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 get T divided by seventy two hundred times V one plus V two minus we will be left with V one T three divided by seventy two hundred V one T three divided by seventy two hundred minus V two T one divided by seventy two hundred V two T one divided by seventy two hundred. But we also know that T1 is equal to V1 by alpha and T3 is equal to V2 by beta. We can substitute the values of T3 and T1. We get S to be equal to T divided by 7200 into V1 plus V2 minus V1 V2 divided by 7200 into 1 by alpha. Plus one by beta. So this is the required expression for the distance travelled by the train in the time interval t when its maximum speed is known to us. The speed at which braking to be applied is known to us. The acceleration constant is known to us, and the retardation is known to us. Expression. Now we can also find out the expression of The vol uh, velocity v two at which the mechanical blade brakes needs to be applied. Let us see how we know that t two is equal to v one minus v two divided by beta c. This can be further written as t 
e2 times beta c to be equal to v1 minus v2 and v2 can be written as v1 minus t2 beta c as we are trying to find out the expression for v2 so we need to keep v2 here and resolve these these terms further also we can write t2 in terms of the total time t minus t1 minus t2 not t2 t3 times beta c where the values of t1 and t3 are known to us we can substitute the values of t1 and t3 in this equation so in this equation will become v1 minus beta c times t minus v1 by alpha minus v2 divided by beta now we again have v2 here so we will take this v2 this side and will try to take common v2 so v2 minus beta c by beta v2 this should be plus will be equal to v1 minus beta c t plus beta c by alpha times v1 taking v2 common we get v2 into 1 plus beta c by beta to be equal to v1 minus beta c into t minus v1 by alpha we can divide this whole term to get the value of v2 so v2 will be equal to v1 minus beta c into t minus v1 by alpha whole divided by 1 plus beta c by beta this is the expression for v2 when we know the maximum speed that a locomotive can attain the costing retardation coefficient the total time to be taken uh, between the two stations and the acceleration constant using these two expression we will try to solve some numerical problems in the later lectures till then thank you so much for this lecture